time will get silent. And if you're not texting today, you may not get an answer at all. But we can be assured that our Savior is always listening. Amen. You can call him up any time, day or night.
of Jesus into eternity. Mankind was made to need God, the maker and creator of all things, and God has fixed it so that we not only rely on Him, but that we recognize that we are made to need each other. Contrary to popular worldview, I come to tell you we need each other. Have I got a witness in here? If that were not so, perhaps Jesus wouldn't have put as much emphasis as he did on loving God and loving our neighbor. God did not make us to live alone, but together. And since we are made in the image of God, there is not only a physical part of us that is likened to Him, but there is also a spiritual part, a sign of us that is made in His image. Both the physical and the spiritual parts of every human being need to be cared for. I need a witness right here. On the physical side, we need good food. We need plenty of sleep and decent living conditions in order that our bodies may remain healthy and strong. On the spiritual side, we first need to have a relationship with one another. Parents and children need to have a healthy relationship in the home in order to have a healthy mental outlook on life and in relating to God and our fellow men. Amen. Amen. It starts in the home. Parents and children. Parents teaching their children respect and authority and obedience and love and how to serve one another. Respecting the rights of one another. And when children are taught properly, they can go into the classroom and behave themselves. Have I got a witness in the class? You can speak and, and, and hear teachers talking everywhere that it's hard to teach today. Because children are so out of control and have lack of respect for what's going on. And there's somebody that's throwing a spitball or doing something to the knee that's disrupting everything that should and ought to happen in that classroom. I tell you, we need to go back to some basics. Amen. Amen, amen. I've heard parents say, well, I'm not going to uh, uh, pressure my child to come to church or come to Sunday school. I'm going to wait until they're able to make their own decision. Well, it's going to be too late. Amen. amen. Leave a child to himself. He's going to do what a child will do. And that's play. Amen. Amen. But we got to teach them that there are some important things that they've got to garner, that they've got to gather, that they've got to bring into their life situation in order to be the person that God has intended for them to be. Amen. Does that make sense to anybody? Amen, Amen church. Physically, a person may be healthy as a bug in the room and appear to be the picture of life, but spiritually dead based on the way they think, the way they speak, and the way they live their life. In olden days, in the days when Jesus walked upon the earth, everyone did not have the privilege to have his own personal Bible as we have today. Everyone did not have the privilege to go to school and 
learn to read and become as educated as many folk are today. Back then, people listened to what others had to say. And by that method, they learned many things, and those things were committed to memory and passed on from generation to generation. In our text today, Jesus said, You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. In the law of Moses, as written in Exodus in 21, uh, the person that took the life of another by accident could be pursued by the avenger of blood who was usually a relative, and be killed if caught before entering a city of refuge. The one that accidentally killed another could flee to a city of refuge to have the matter judged by the congregation. But if someone killed another person using an iron instrument, that was called murder. Mm -hmm. And the murderer was put to death by the congregation. Mm -hmm. Oh, aren't you glad that we're not in those times? Right. 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 Oh, we can thank God. Yeah. Grace and mercy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We can thank God for a legal system. Yeah. And you can't just go out and and uh, lift up a 44 and just take somebody out because they did you wrong. But there is a process. Oh, we can think that God is good. God is good. The system isn't perfect, but it's better than it was. Amen. Amen. The law said, Thou shalt not keep. And if a person didn't kill anybody, they were considered to have kept the law. The law said, thou shalt not steal. And if a person didn't take his neighbor's property, he was considered to have fulfilled the law, regardless to what he may have felt. But there has been a spiritual transformation of mankind and it has been moving down through the ages from Jesus Christ even to our present day. Yes. That things must happen on the inside. We've got to have a stirring on the inside. In Old Testament days, they looked at what you did in the outward appearance. And if you did everything that was uh, 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 becoming to those who saw you were okay. But that's not good enough. Because there were those who didn't kill, but they hated their need. And so God has brought about a change. And that change involves being transformed and being made over and being converted and being uh, 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 brought into a new creation in Jesus Christ. Jesus came to carry the human race forward to the next great step, the most important step of all, which can be the final step in the overcoming of all limitation. And I come to tell you, we've got many limitations. When worldly limitations are purged out of us, then great possibilities are before us. Jesus says, greater works than these shall you do. What did Jesus do? He went about working miracles, opening the eyes of blinded folk, causing those who were deaf and couldn't speak to hear and speak again. Those who were lame, they got up at the voice of Jesus and went about their business. Oh, I come to tell you, 
some limitations in the family of God today. Worldly limitations. And we've got to come to recognize that we are limited because of the worldliness that we allow to remain inside. Amen, I hope somebody is getting what I'm trying to get at. A change has got to take place. Yes, it's a popular thing. The word says that if you just open your mouth and confess Jesus, then you'll be saved. But I want to bring some news to you today. It's got to go a little bit further than that. Have I got a witness in here? Amen. 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 There are some folk who know Jesus is because they heard about him. Even the demons knew who Jesus was. Amen. But everybody that's able to know who Jesus is, they're not going to get into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. 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 I don't want anybody to start throwing anything on me. <laughs> but I'm trying to help somebody. This train is about heaven. Getting folk into heaven. And we've got an enemy. And he's alive. And if he can get into your head and cause your thinking to be all muffled up and confused. Maybe you'll end up down there with him. It's already been decided where he's going. But God has given us some common sense. He's given us a mind to think. Have I got a witness in you? Amen. He has made us in his image. Ability to make choices. And we can say yes or no to whatever. But I come to tell you, I want to invite you to say yes to Jesus. Whatever He brings to your address, we need to say yes. If He says that you've got to be changed, Lord, what do I need to do? Amen. Amen. There's no guarantee how long we're going to be around here. Right. We can be sitting here right now, dressed up and yeah. looking good, yeah. and be gone tomorrow. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And I come to tell you, if it's not settled and right with Jesus, it'll be a sad day in the evening. Yeah. Amen. 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 Some folk are believing, saved no matter what. And I want somebody to show me that in Scripture. Amen. 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 God has given us some time to get some things right. And it's left up to us. Jesus came to bridge the gap.
that God has an interest and it's for you. I tell you, God is real. He's real, church. There are far too many Christians who never discover their God-given gift and find their rightful place in ministry because they fail to understand what Jesus meant when he said you must be born again. The heart of the Son on the Mount is the essence of the Christian message that Jesus preached. Without the new birth experience that Jesus talked about, it's impossible to understand what God is doing and what he wants us to do. There are folk who say they believe, but it makes no sense for us to gather here every Sunday. Makes no sense for them to put their good money into the plate and they don't know what it's going to be used for. Makes no sense to have all these ministries and folk running and meetings here and there. And they wonder what is going to become. Well, I come to tell you. Amen. We didn't learn how to eat steak when we were drinking milk. But we kept on growing. We kept on the tour. Mom would take some, 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 some of that broth and mix a little cornbread with it or a stock and put that in the baby's mouth. And pretty soon you found that there was some little teeth that started to form in the gums and you couldn't even hardly touch them and they're ready to bite you. <laughs> Give them some time very good. Amen. As it is with the word of God. But you've got to get into it. You've got to know what the Lord has intended for his people. We must understand that our conformity essential as it is is no longer sufficient in itself. If we are to come of age spiritually, we must understand that looking the part on the outside is not good enough. The inner man has to be changed also. Church folk know how to look churchy. We know how to dress up and look the part on the outside. I need another witness right there. Oh, yeah. We know how to comb our hair. What to wear and how to act in church to look the part. The fundamental spiritual growth that Jesus teaches is about change that develops on the inside of a person. This change grows from the inside to the outside of an individual. You can look the part all you want on the outside. But if you haven't been born of the Spirit of God in Christ, what's carnal and fleshly on the inside will eventually show up on the outside. Can I get a witness here? You haven't been purged of that cussing. Sooner or later, it's going to show up. I've heard folk not even getting out of the sanctuary or the parking lot. And all of a sudden, that language changed. One Sunday, I was going out of the sanctuary into the fellowship hall. Mm -hmm. Met a lady that was talking to somebody. Okay. And she couldn't even get out of the church before she was cussing. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Amen, church. A change has got to take place on the inside. Just being able to voice with your mouth, Jesus. You've got to do a little bit more than that. He says, Lord, I stand at the door and knock. If you get it out, we'll hear my voice. And open up that door. The knob is on the inside. Open up that door. I will come in. And I will suck with that person. In other words, Jesus will have a, a conversation. The person who invites him in. But you got to invite him in. There's a popular thought that he breaks down doors and he comes in without anybody inviting him in. You've got to invite him in. The Lord showed me that you've got to surrender and invite him in. I grew up in a Christian family and came to the Lord and left. All I could think about was growing up and doing some of the things that I saw other adults do. And the Lord knew I wasn't ready for a full surrender. He may come into somebody's heart at that confession. But that wasn't my experience. It took me 30 years before I came to realize that I needed to be born again. <laughs> and the Lord showed me in a vision that I was going to come to the end of my life and be cast away from His presence. <laughs> it almost took the top of my head right off because I sang in the choir. I had solos in the choir. I was on the trustee board. I taught Sunday school. Had prayer at every meeting. In church every Sunday. But the Lord showed me that I would not make it in. Because in my adult life, I was living just like everybody else. What we're talking about is transformation. We're talking about conversion. We're talking about being changed. We're talking about being made a new creature. Jesus says, many will call on his name and say, Lord, I've done this and that and the other in your name. Word says he'll tell them to depart from me because I never knew you. And he's talking about church folk. Amen. Folk that knew how to dress up. made 
just feel good about who we thought we were. Yes, We've got to come into a new area. Yes. We've got to be converted. You can look the part on the outside, but if you haven't been changed on the inside, you can have Jesus on your lips yes. and be headed straight for hell. Amen. 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 Feeling it. 
it serves him right. All of these things form an impenetrable barrier to spiritual power and progress. The word of God says vengeance is mine. I've heard it, and I know that you've heard it. People call someone worthless and good for nothing. Or call someone a fool. We've all heard these expressions used against another person. Well, Jesus lets us know today that if we use those expressions against another person, that's serious. So serious that it can cause the person that did it to be judged and thrown into hell. Right. God has made all of us in his image and has given each of us a gift to be discovered and used for his glory. Right. Telling a person that he or she is dumb and that he or she good for nothing and that he or she is a fool destroys that person's self esteem anybody know what I'm talking about think about how long it's taken us to get over the many barriers that has blocked our progress because we were thought of and treated like animals. And I say all the time, the word of God is indispensable for our lives. Confessing Jesus is just the beginning of this Christian journey. We gotta get him down on the inside of us so that his spirit can teach us not to do the things that will destroy us in the end. We're not going to take all this baggage up into heaven. Amen? Amen. And trying to get rid of it on your own. Efforts have been made with little progress. But I come to tell you the word can deliver. The word of God can take away custody. The word of God can change hate and cause a spirit of love to be there. The word of God can take away disunity and schisms and all kinds of things that cause God's people to be separated and cause fellowship and love to be in the midst of his people. The enemy wants us to gather here on Sunday and no one reach out and touch anyone else. In other words, it's not important to shake hands anymore. It's not important to give somebody a love hug in Jesus' name. Now it's got to be in Jesus' name. Okay? Amen. It's got to be in Jesus' name. When the sons of God gather together. The enemy was right there. And so unless you got your hug lined up and know what it is, it can be a road to somewhere else. That's why we need Jesus. Amen? There are folk who come to church for many reasons. But I come to tell you it's got to be about Jesus. If it's not about Jesus, it's not going to work out for your good. But if you got Jesus on your GPS, if you got Jesus on your top, if you got Jesus on your mind, then whatever it is that you stand in need of, I come to tell you, God is going to be your supply. Jesus says, if you come to worship, bring in your gift. And there, remember that there is an unsettled issue between
between you and your fellow man. He says, leave your gift and go and settle that down. And then come back and offer your gift. And it will be accepted. Old saints of the church used to say, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Jesus says, forgive and you shall be forgiven. One of the hardest things in the world for some folk is to forgive someone who is wronged them. For right where we are as Christians, we've got to learn how to forgive one another. Whether the wrongdoer admits they're wrong and apologize or not, we've got to forgive if we expect to be forgiven of our many sins. Jesus says, agree with your adversary quickly while you're in the way with him. Jesus lets us know that it's much easier to resolve and settle problems when they occur than it is to study and ponder over them. Yes, we can admit that there are some things that deserve our close attention. Some things that we can't let go right away. But I come to tell you, Jesus came to set the captives free. Have I got a witness in here? Difficulties and problems have a way of digging themselves into our psyche, into our conscious and subconscious mind. If you take a young sapling, a young plant or tree, can be easily moved from one place to another before it takes root. But once the roots go down deep and take hold, something will have to be damaged before you can get it moved. That is a great leap of faith that must be made by every believer. I have to make it. You will have to make it or know that you made it. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, I had to leap over barriers of fear, of apprehension, fear of wondering what would happen if I totally surrendered my life to Jesus and invited the Holy Spirit in. Well, I come to tell you, Jesus is not going to do you harm. He came to heal you. He came to bless you. He came to lift you up. Yeah, yeah. He came to make you better. Yeah. He came to give you life eternal. Yeah. And I wrestle with the spiritual standards of life that Jesus talked about. And life itself was like a roller coaster. But the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This call involves Total surrender. This call involves giving up what you think you're in control of and allowing Jesus to bring into your life what he has in store for you. And that is for you to be born again. When believers are born again of the Holy Spirit, which is the evidence of our salvation, the old begins to be converted to the new. The fruit of the Spirit begins to grow and become evident. Where there was hate, the Holy Spirit drives that Spirit out and the Spirit of love takes up residence. Then believers can be saved. Saved from anger. Saved from meanness. Saved from resentment that later grows into hate, that will later manifest itself in an outward show of wrath and vengeance, saved from desires to get back and even the score, saved from a war that rages on the inside where lust and temptation, wantonness and disobedience to God's word and way, anger, bitterness, in every sin from A to Z, wanting to take place and control your life. Save from self-destruction. Save from feelings of indifference. Save from having a don't care attitude about self and about what happens to others. Save to be more like Jesus 
in faith and in works. Oh, I'm so glad that the Lord brought me to that place of understanding what it means to be born again of the Spirit. Because now I understand what it means to love even my enemy. To pray for those who despitefully use me. Pray for those who talk and say negative things behind my back. Pray for those who would use and abuse me. Pray for those who would take me out at the blinking of an eye. I come to tell you that's what being born again is all about. He's on a great example. They took him to the cross. They nailed his hands and his feet. His blood went down to the ground. But oh, I thank God today that that blood covered an Arkansas boy who was on his way to hell. But now I can look up and know where my Redeemer is. And I thank God that He lives within my heart. We've got to have a heart change. And when our hearts, our minds are changed, we can see Jesus in a different way. We can say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Stand with me. 